Hey everyone, and welcome back to Fresh's Play, the show where you can get just a pixel of deep thinking with your mostly nonsensical video game discussions. This is episode 23, and I am Professor Phil Chaveau. He's Professor John Adams, and he's Professor Brandon West, and together we are professors who play video games. For this series, as you can probably tell by the title of this episode, uh, which as of right now hasn't been thought of, but it will be there, you know? Yep. Whew, fourth wall. Fourth um, wall. <laughs> we'll be playing Fire Emblem Engage, the newest in game in the storied Fire Emblem series. It is a long one, so there's a lot of optional battles and side conversations. Uh, if you, I, I feel like if you just speed run through it, you're probably going to do it in like 40 hours. Yeah, yeah. But it, we're not going to be doing that, so it's probably going to be more like 60 hours. Well, and that assumes competence, which I'm not sure I have. Yeah. It's, it's hard. Yeah, yeah it's, it's hard. <laughs> so this is a three-part series, uh, and with that, we'll jump in, but not before I ask my uh, co-professors um, how they are. So, Brandon, how are you? Uh, I'm all right. Okay. How about you, Jarn? I'm feeling combative. Ready for, ready for <laughs> Fire Emblem. Yeah, before um, before we started this uh, episode, we, John and I had like a five-minute, not very articulate discussion on what the outcome of the previous game should have been like. What was the true outcome of the previous game? Yeah, I mean, there's there's right answers about three houses, and there's Phil's answers about three houses. Which are, all, which are the right answers. <laughs> um, Wait, so, wait, hang, hang on. Something can't be both what it is and what it's not. <laughs> it's both and situation. It's paradoxical. Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Law of excluded middle. Um, so, um, Fire Emblem, for those of you out there who has not played one, we recommend it, but it is it is kind of daunting. There's a lot of games that are, especially the early the early games are only in Japanese. Some of them have been lo- relocated to the West. Um, it's kind of like getting into like the, the Mother series, I would say. Like Once you get in it, you are in it. But it's kind of daunting to get in. So, Fire Emblem is a tactical turn-based RPG, tactical turn-based RPG, uh, set in high fantasy, random sets inspired settings, and has an anime art style. There are beautiful anime people in it. How are you, Phil? I'm good. Thanks for asking. Um, I've said this for a few years, okay? But Fire Emblem is the original Game of Thrones. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Okay. So, like, if you take the Fire Emblem plots, which span any, like, there happen like multiple years. There's time skips. Um, you get those plots, you add some overt violence, and, like, show the scenes of, like... But at, like, a PG-13 rating. Yeah, no, it's Fire Emblem, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, you take the plots, you add, like, overt HBO-style violence and sexual scenes. Yeah. And you get Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yep. Um, so the first game was released in 1990, and it's called Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light, which is a mouthful. <laughs> Such a Japanese <laughs> title. <laughs> Uh, such an anime Japanese title for the Famicom. Um, it was not Trouble localized. Right Famicom. It is what the Nintendo was called in Japan. Wow. Family Computer. They changed oh. the name for the US because they were like, that's not how uh, Americans think of this sort of entertainment. They don't play it as a family. They play it individually. Oh, okay. So they changed it to the yeah. Nintendo Entertainment System. Pixel of Death. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but they also they still call it the Nintendo Inter- Inter- Entertainment System because they wanted parents to buy it, thinking it was more than just a video game. <laughs> Because it's entertainment, right? Do everything. Yeah, yeah. Not, not necessarily. Not yet. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was not lo- localized until 2020. So, if you lived in the West and you wanted to play the first Fire Emblem, you have to find like a fan translation, the Japanese, run. or learn Japanese. Yeah. Which is why a lot of people, like our generation before us, kind of learn Japanese to play like Final Fantasy and Fire Emblem. I have yet to play the first Fire Emblem. Ever. I have played it. You have played it? Yeah, because I owned it. It was a Nintendo Switch Online thing. It was like five bucks, and you could get like the special edition, which I didn't. Gotcha. And I sort of regret because it's selling for much more now online. Um, but it was like five bucks, and uh, it is the hardest. I've heard it's crazy It hard. is so... like the, the, the game starts, and they're like, all right, here's Fire Emblem, Shadow, Dragon, and the Blade of Light. You are being attacked. Um... Go into this battlefield and like fight. And like, if I hadn't played another Fire Emblem, I wouldn't know what even is happening. But like, right. you move, you move characters in the battlefield, and like, you get in, you get engaged in battle. And they they are not. It's not like an easy battle. Like they are, they have more units than you. You have to protect several several like you show civilians. Up and, you show up and you're like, oh, this is one of the scenes where I'm like meant to die. So yeah. like, for no, the plot, no, and they're no, like, no. nope, that's level one. Yeah. You get better. <laughs> and you have you have like three people. It's so hard. Yeah, I played for like 40 minutes and Marth died, like the main character died, and I was like, I, you can keep playing, but I was like... Really? Yeah. With the main character dead? Yeah, yeah, and really? I was like, I, I, 
I, I, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go back at some point, viewers. So, um, there are 17 games total plus 5 spin-offs. So, technically 2, but 17 main series. That's so much more than I would think. Like, if you, no, if you ask Emblem's... me, like, how many Fire Emblem games have been released, and I play a decent amount, I would say, like, 12? No. 17. 17. You have to think, it goes back, like, what is that? 25 years now? Yeah. 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 And also, um, for a while there, because they were releasing for the DS, and, like, it's a fairly... Not easy game to make, but like you can take the engine and reuse it for several games. Right. They were releasing a final game every year, basically for a while. Well, but I'm just saying, like, I even like like even games I don't play, I like see them in stores. Like I haven't played Mario yeah, Party in a long localized. time. That's the yeah, thing. Yeah. Like they're they're missing me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're missing them. I'm missing them. The well. name of the series Fire Emblem is because most games feature a specific weapon or element or some sort of MacGuffin that you need to use to this to this to down a mighty foe, usually a dragon. Um, in the first game, it is a literal fire emblem, which means a shield with like five, I think, rocks. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Like, like gems, right? The infinite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is, hey man. <laughs> Connections. Yeah. Um, so basically, um, sometimes the actual fire emblem shows up. Sometimes it doesn't. Most times it doesn't. Yeah. It's not an actual. The actual fire emblem doesn't show up. The series is still called that though. Right. Yeah, in the in the last game, uh, in Three Houses, <laughs> the Fire Emblem was uh, like genetic purity. Yes. Basically, it was like you have your genetic line has an emblem embedded into your genetics that allows you to use special a crest. magic. A crest, and like yours was the. And the way they find out if you have a crest is like they take your blood and look in your cells, and your cells have the little symbol in them. Yeah, there's some real like monarchy equals <laughs> yeah, genetic it's... eugenics yeah. themes running through that game. And that's oh, and that one of the ca the character I like is the one that tries to bring that down. Yeah. Basically, yeah. 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 Um, it's all it's 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 crazy. It's a good game. It's a it's a great game. We'll talk more about that. Um, so the series first came to the West in two thousand three. That just feels would, late. Because yeah. GameCube came out when two thousand. It was two thousand year two thousand. I think yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but it came for the Game Boy Advance in three. Well, but that's what I'm saying. I'm saying I remember playing this on the Game Boy Advance, and so it's messing up my chronological. Well, you have timeline. to remember too. Like, I, I, I have to check this, but I don't remember. I don't know if this game. I'm not saying the name of the game, uh, okay. folks, because at the end of the episode, we're gonna do a uh, quiz for to see if they know the names of Fire Emblem games because sure, they're all yeah. very anime-ish. Um, it's like <laughs> anime names now are crazy. Um, but um, the reason it came to the the U.S. or to the West is because in '01, Super Smash Brothers Melee came out for the GameCube, yeah. and they in that game, if you ever played that game, had Marth and Roy. The greatest Marth, Super Smash Bros. game. It is a very good fight. Is, me, yeah, uh, <laughs> fight me in Melee. Uh, yeah, um, Marth is the main character of the first Fire Emblem game, and Roy is the main character of um, another Fire Emblem game, which I won't say. It's another famous or Roy, another famous one. Yeah. Um, and they were both in Super Smash Bros. Melee. And if you've played another Super Smash Bros. since then, you know there's like 17 Fire Emblem characters in there. So um, many. Yeah, so many. Because there's so many Fire Emblem characters. There's like 25 per game. And they're all <laughs> fighters, so it's pretty yeah. easy to like port them over. Yeah. <laughs> um, people like playing with Marth and Roy a lot, so the creators of Fire Emblem, you know, part of Nintendo, were like, what if we localize Fire Emblem? I think it's just someone walking down the hall. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Very sharp heels. Yeah. Um, so, they localized it, it started selling well, but the, the series almost died in like the late 2000s. And actually, John's favorite Fire Emblem, Awakening, mm. that's what saved it. So for, actually, here's a fun story. So, when they made, I think the, the game before that, they, um, basically Nintendo was like, this game, this hasn't sold well in like two games now. It's because nobody knew you were releasing I games. Know, I know. If it, if your next game doesn't sell more than two hundred and fifty thousand copies, which is what they usually sold, like for for because it was easy, cheap to make, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, you this is the last one. So because it was gonna be the last one, they were like, ch kitchen sink. Go hard. They, yeah. ch they chucked everything in there. There's, Feel like there's it. a lot of mechanics, a lot of new stuff, um, and that game sold two hundred fifty thousand copies in the first month. Yep. Yeah. So they made it. Tracks. and They were like, you know what? Let's keep making these. And then Three Houses, which is the one that came out in 2019, was the first one for main, for like hand for not not for handhelds, but for consoles since 07. Um, and it was the most successful entry ever. Um, it's speculated because it was I mean people know more about it and the Switch is huge, but it has the most social simulation of all games. Awakening? No, uh, Three Houses. Three Houses. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, of course. So Three Houses in uh, 2019 has the most social simulation of all games, and people are really, like, that's gamers like that now. Yeah. 
it's kind of where the gaming industry is going. It is the least fire emblemy of the yeah, fire emblem it is. Games. That's why, and people were saying like, people were saying it was a great entry point too because it's the least fire emblemy. So people started with that and they went back to Awakening or they are playing Engage now. Yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, it was like a, a, a worry of like the producers when they made Engage. They were like, we're afraid that people are going to get into this and not and think it's not. Emblem, um, not uh, three houses enough. Yeah, because it's too far emblem. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. So three houses is the least far emblem of all. It's it's what got me in the door, um, because people are like, you can. There's a dating sim. And I was like, sign me up. It's also why we're not <laughs> playing it with Brandon because I feel like Brandon will like traditional fire. He'll like traditional fire emblem more, I think. Yeah. But three houses is still phenomenal. Because we thought about it, we yeah. were like three houses engage three houses, and we decided we will like engage more. But you should go back to three houses later. Yeah, yep. I can loan you my copy. <laughs> um, so that's Fire Emblem, right? Um, so our experience with Fire Emblem, as you heard, like John and I have some, John more than me. So I, I bought uh, three houses at the end, of late 2020. There was a deal. It was like the game itself plus all the DLC, which and the DLC in Fire Emblem is like extensive. It's like 25 hours worth of content, basically, yeah. for like 40 bucks. And I was like, you know what? Sure, I sure see it. Whatever. Try it out. Um, the person who told me I should play Persona also told me I should play Fire Emblem. Yeah, that's they've a, been right both times. A good times. person. And they also told me to play Nier Automata. Mm. Which I'm going to at some point because I, they don't miss. Um, and then I got weirdly into it, like the story, the characters, the beautiful anime people. But then I also got into the tactics, and that's when I started realizing that I enjoyed the aspects of like telling my characters what to do and then seeing you play out. Because well, you love pre-planning. I do. You do. I do. And I didn't know I did until this point, basically. Yeah. Right. Um, until Persona in this point, um, I never thought I'd like gameplay like this because I don't really like chess or like shogi or stuff like that, but I, I, I really enjoyed like customizing units and like... Yeah, I, I don't, I think it's less, you less like the tactics, which are fun, but I think you love strategy. You love like yeah. the pre-planning customization in the same way I love roguelikes. You're like, yeah. give me an inventory <laughs> yeah. and some way to manage it to optimize each of these Yeah, characters. there's a button in Fire Emblem now that says like optimize inventory and I'm like, no. That's my That's favorite my part of the game. That's <laughs> my, I do that. Um, <laughs> So, the inventory management is like sometimes two hours. Yeah. Where you're like moving stuff. Oh, around for sure. That's yeah. the that's the major part of the battle. You're yeah. like, how am I doing this? And you can like move when they where they start. Sometimes we yeah. promise this is a fun game. It doesn't. It's sound so hard like to it. explain. Um, <laughs> I actually have a bunch of gameplay, like eighty hours worth of gameplay recorded for Final Fantasy Three Houses that I have never released. Oh. And it's just like let's play basically. Just release some of it. I, I, I just need like to. a clip. I need to. Yeah, it's, it's probably not good. Um, I think also, like, Fire Emblem and my appreciation for the tactics is what inspired me doing Pokemon Nuzlocke. Oh, yeah. Because, like, a friend of mine gave me Shield, and I was like, I don't really want to play this until I, like, remembered what a Nuzlocke was because I read an article online, and I was like, that sounds that kind of fun. require me that, to do a lot more planning. I didn't understand why, and I do now. Um, I wanted to go back to, like, the new Fire Emblem games, and, or the old Fire Emblem games, and I didn't because I tried F Fire Emblem 1, and I was like, I... I, this is yeah. so hard. So difficult. Um, I never played another type of tactical game, and I've already gone back to play the other Fire Emblems. Um, I will at some point, but I have to buy them for the DS now because the DS store isn't, isn't online anymore. Yeah, yeah, although they're bringing, I think they're bringing Sacred Stones to Nintendo Online. Okay. I want to play Awakening. Cause I, yeah. Awakening's so good. <laughs> is, that, is, it, is that Corinne? No, Crom. Crom. Voiced by Matthew Mercer. Ah, we like him. Role fan. Yeah. We do like him. Um, all right, Brandon, what is your experience with Fire Emblem? So, uh, to date, I have played Fire Emblem for about one hour. Nice. Last night. This he's, one. He's about one this. hour into the four-hour tutorial. And the professors drag Brandon <laughs> kicking and screaming into another new game. Yeah, that is, uh, that is exactly that's exactly what's happening, yeah. yeah. Brandon wrote here, I finally got it down last night and got through the tutorial fights against the Queen. I'm now where the castle's getting invaded, so I think I'm in the beginning of the story proper. And I wrote, you are not lol. <laughs> <laughs> There's another three tutorial fights oh and chapters. God. But, like, they're quick. Like, the fights happen in the chapter, like, the post-chapter hub is fast. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not until you get to the fifth chapter where they, like, really release you in the hub, and then you have to, like, and talk I think, to people and stuff. As I said, I think the fourth oh God, fight that is... Oh, God, that sounds awful. That's a good time. Um, because I admit, the way I am playing this game was very much, like, skip dialogue, skip dialogue, skip dialogue, oh, get to battle. Do that. You should not do that. That's why I play this, Fire Emblem. This <laughs> is... I, I think the best way to think about it is, like, if you skip... Imagine if you skip the dialogue in Baldur's Gate. That's the same thing here. You shouldn't be skipping the dialogue. He skips the dialogue in Baldur's Gate, for sure. He's a dialogue skipper. Do you? Unlike the second playthrough. Yeah, yeah. So, like, you should, you should like... 
because like the social aspects add a lot to like the battle aspects. It's kind of like I would I would uh, like it's similar to naming your Pokemon or like at that because that because yeah. if you get to know your characters outside of battle when they're in battle, it's more meaningful kind of thing. Mm. Especially because of the, some of the mechanics in the game. Have you played other tar- tactical RPGs? Persona. Um, Persona is a, a turn-based, not tactical though. Turn- like the, like turn- where you move characters in the battlefield. Well, turn-based and tactical are not necessarily separate. But uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, uh, mm-hmm. very little bit. I didn't actually enjoy it that much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, back, this is going to be a fun time for you I think. back then. So this is, uh, yeah, this is kind of new. But I think I play a lot of uh, play a lot of Civilization, so I'm pretty used to like moving units around on a yeah, board. Yeah, and you play Baldur's Gate, which I when we were True. playing Baldur's Gate, I was like, I wish it operated on a Fire Emblem grid system. Because it's you similar. could easily have played, you could easily have made a Baldur's Gate in Fire Emblem. Yes, yeah. True. Yeah. Baldur's Gate is Fire Emblem plus. Yeah, Baldur's Gate is Fire Emblem D and D fantasy. Yeah, well, and it's yeah. got like it's got a more complicated movement system, and it's got yeah. a more complicated social system. Yeah, it's the I mean, Fire Emblem is AAA, but it's the more AAA version of Fire Emblem's Game Boy Advance feel. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, John, what about you? <clears throat> yeah, I've, I've been playing Fire Emblem a long time. It was one of my first like favorite games. I owned it first for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, I owned two Game Boy Advance games, and then I played it on the GameCube, and we won't name titles until we get there, because Phil wants to play a game, which will be fun. And then, uh, let's see, there was one on... There's one on the Wii that I didn't ever play, but I know of. Yeah, it was, it's the last... That's the Corinne one. Yeah, that's the last yeah. uh, console one before Three Houses. And then I played Awakening, and then I played the follow-up to Awakening, whose name I cannot remember right now, but it's like Awakening, it's colon, Japanese title. Nice. Right? Yeah, uh, I don't actually don't know that one. Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't remember what it's called right now. Um, and then I played uh, the, new, the newest ones for the Switch. And my favorite is Awakening, for reasons we'll get into a little later. But they're all real good. They're all excellent. Fates. Fates. That was the one. From the Fates. Fates. Um, so, yeah, John has played a good amount of these, and he started way earlier than, well, either of us. <laughs> earlier than I knew, because I thought I was... Because of where it is, the very first Fire Emblem game that I played feels like a game in the middle of the series because it's in the middle of the series. Because it is, yeah. <laughs> and so I just assumed that I was coming in in the middle of a series, but it turns out I might have played the first one. You were coming in the middle of a series, but you were coming in in the first of the series in the West. Yeah, basically. the American yeah. series, yeah, yeah. which is rising because I... Localized. I would have been... Oh, gosh, I don't want to give away my age, but I would have been, like, early middle school. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so... We have a little bit of experience, so let me try to explain to you the gameplay of Fire Emblem in a way that isn't boring, because it's very hard to do. It, yeah, okay. fi- describing right, Fire Emblem it. gameplay is a little like describing a dream, and like it's interesting to you, and it's yeah. a great game, but when you describe it, it gets lost in translation. And even if you just see a screenshot, you'd be like, "What? why would this be fun? Why is this fun? But <laughs> yeah. it is, I promise. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of my I favorite games. All right, this. go ahead, Brandon. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take a bird's eye view of a battlefield. Now, the battlefield should be imagined kind of like a chess grid, but with terrain features such that the different squares are in fact different your characters move like chess pieces on that board however they're not chess pieces and they're not deterministic like that they all have special powers and abilities all of say like final fantasy it would be more like show- yeah i think it's more like a sh- like a shogi movement type of thing because shogi the, the pieces have like the, the way they move is not like determined by squares necessarily it's, it's a little different but yeah that's a great explanation that's what I had in my first bullet point here so nice job I think I think one of the one of the key takeaways that maybe you haven't gotten to yet is that this game occurs on the battlefield which means your pieces are also moving and fighting just like you said but there's a social aspect on the battlefield yeah there will be times where like your pieces can move up and talk to villagers to like save them or stop their homes from burning down or to or each other to each other they mm-hmm. can rescue and so there is like a Unlike chess, there are story elements that happen during the game as well. And like, you'll figure out... Which things. is why I think it's more like Shogi, because Shogi has, not the conversation thing, but Shogi has pieces of, like, if they're next to this piece, they do this. Different things yeah. happen. So, yeah. like, in Fire Emblem, you'll have, like, buffs that are, like, if this character is next to an ally, um, a female ally, they get plus two strength. Because they like to protect the women yeah. in the group. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's stuff like that, right? So you have, like, cons- when you're putting your units, you're, they're called the characters are called units... And it's implied that, like, they're on the battlefield alone, 
But it's implied that they're like controlling a squadron or a battalion when they're running around. In three houses, they made it explicit. explicit they gave you yeah. squadrons with your units that you could use as like special attacks. Yeah. But the assumption is that like an entire war is happening. Yeah, you're just controlling the commanders of each squadron, basically. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's see here. Once a character runs into an enemy unit, right? So one of your units, you like can like run them into someone else and attack. Um, a discrete battle scene sequence exists. It occurs. You don't actually control the battle. They give you stats before you get into that battle. They're like how much damage you will do, how much damage they will do, who will take turns when, and the uh, uh, accuracy of each attack. Yeah. Right. So you can decide: Do I actually want to go into this uh, attack this other battalion or unit or enemy unit, or do I want to like go try to go around them or let them attack me because then I can counter faster? There's some stuff like that. So for example. There's a like a rogue unit that if you if you get attacked first you get you always dodge the first attack and you get to retaliate so right. like there's stuff there's stuff like that right and so I will say that in previous fire emblems they didn't have that screen and that's what made it so hard yeah you had to just know things about yeah. your units and guess things about the enemy units so yeah it wasn't until later they were like we'll give you some of the info yes it, it's not perfect but it's some of the info right and yep. then and then like so imagine the, the way I like to think about it is is if imagine if you, you're walking in the overworld in Pokemon, right? And um, you, a trainer sees you, but instead of you going into that battle with your little Pokemon and controlling each move you do, you basically see that trainer, what Pokemon they have, and it tells you, like, your Pikachu does 17 damage, their monster will do 5, you do 17 again, you kill them, you just, okay. so you're like, okay, let's go into this battle. And then it's a quick thing. auto and then battle. it's a quick auto battle. Maybe, like, 5 seconds. Yeah. yeah. So that's why the inventory management is so important because when you set up your units before the battle starts is basically you're setting up all these stats and advantages, right? But it is fun because then you get to see these little battles break out and you get to see like heroic knights do like charges into yeah, like yeah. archers and like dragons land and breathe fire. So the nice thing about it being an auto battle is the animations can also be pre-planned yeah. and it leans to a much cleaner battle experience or feeling. Like you know in Pokémon you end up in a situation a lot where like the one of the Pokemon like makes a punch motion and there's like an explosion of stars. Yeah, yeah. The animations here are a lot better. Yeah, yeah. They're Typically. much more detailed. Yeah. Even in the early ones, they have like that happening too. Comparatively yeah, for yeah, G yeah, yeah. for GBA. Um, yeah. and in these in these situations, like when you are in Fire Emblem Three Houses, you had a you could put a camera mode. I think they did this in Awakening too, which is like you're basically first person, like you're you're controlling your character from the ground. Yeah. So you can li you're literally moving around a battlefield and you see other battles happening as you're going. I don't know if they have this camera in this one. I have one. no idea. We should check that out. I don't think they do. I think you I don't think they you can zoom that. in that much. Uh, maybe I haven't gotten to that point yet. I'll check it out. They but. did give you responsive terrain in this one, which is kind of fun, which means like yeah. wherever the battle occurs, your characters will actually be set there. So if you ever get into like a battle on like the stairs of a cathedral, the backdrop will be the stairs of a cathedral and the characters will be at like opposing heights and their attacks will change to show that they're like yeah. leaping down a set there of There are a lot of details in here. It's pretty cool. Um, I, I really like, I, I didn't use a first person camera to like do the tactics because it's hard to see. It's hard to see. Um, but once I knew I was already like going to win a battle, I would go into the first person because it was fun to like run and like see other stuff. And you could see your other, like your other, Characters like battling in the background. It was pretty wild. Pretty fun. Um, so one thing that's interesting here is that um, there's a social aspect in battles, right? So there's a, well, there's a social aspect outside of battles too. Yep. It's always been there, but the F in three houses it got a lot more expan like expansive, right? You had like tea parties and like yeah. To be flippant yeah. about it, Fire Emblem is like a tactics game combined with a dating sim. Yes, right. Especially three houses. Well, and especially especially Awakening. Oh, really? Yeah, so Awakening had a marriage mechanic where halfway through the game, there was a big, big time jump. And well, whoever, a lot of them have that. But whoever you got married in the beginning of the game had a kid. They, a lot of them have that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they, yeah, don't, yeah. They, don't, they took that out of it. They the took that out of it, yeah. So, yeah. But the thing is, it's interesting. Like, part of that was it, in the beginning when Fire Emblem had this, like, they have these time skips and they have, you can have NPCs marry each other depending on how like close they are to each other. Like, you, can, you can manipulate that right. by having them stand next to each other in the battlefield, kill people together. Of romantic stuff like that um, <laughs> and then if they marry each other 5, 10, 15, 20 years later they'll have a kid and that becomes a character that you can then put into your own army yep. and so there's like that's part of the tactics right because knowing which characters marry each other produce the best offspring 
for your battling system was part of the tactics as well. And in some of them, it even like helps you like ally kingdoms to each yeah. other. So you'd be like, oh, I want this kingdom, this kingdom to work together in the second half. Yeah. Of the so game. now yeah. it it, had, it became a lot more of like dating simi and like outside of the combat. But it used to be like a tactics thing. Like, no, you have to get your friends to marry each other so that they can produce a kid that you can then use to fight by murdering together. Yes. Nothing brings a house exactly. together like. Joint murder. As you can see, uh, they took this away because it can, be, can get a little problematic. Uh, it no longer happens now, even with time skips. Um, but uh, it was a, it was a big thing. Now it's more of like a traditional dating sim where you you can go in like walks or tea parties or other situations with you know any of the characters. And when you're in there, you can like compliment them or make them blush and all that dating sim stuff. And it does give you bonuses. Yes, it does give you bonuses. Yeah. So the higher relationship you have with different characters. And characters with themselves, they'll get different bonuses on the battlefield. Yeah. Um, and what's cool about this too is that, like, the reason, the way you unlock these scenes of seeing them like interact or have tea with each other, which adds to the like, like background of the story of the game, um, is by having them interact in the battlefield, right? right? So, and, like, marching together or murdering together or healing together or whatever it is, trading. So you have to do things in the battlefield, like tactically and strategically with these two people if you want them to be friends outside of the battlefield. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Brendan, any thoughts? Do you think that sounds fun? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sitting over here, I'm like, I have nothing to contribute to this conversation. Well, yeah, but like, how, do, how, how do you feel about these like it, these mechanics that are pretty unique to the Fire Emblem series? That is interesting, and I do like the idea of God, it's almost like breeding Pokemon, isn't it? It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's exactly that. That, that yeah. is. That is interesting. But humans. Yeah. And you have to think that you're not. You are as the player, like manipulating people to know each other better, so that right. they can. Yeah. 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 So, it's, they, uh, so they, these characters think they fell in love, but really it was you in the back. <laughs> Your, your fate. Yeah. Yeah. I am the puppet master. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean. That, that is interesting, and it's a game mechanic I haven't really messed around with. Not entirely sure whether I want to. Yeah, it's interesting. Sign. Yeah. So, like, in, in, in Three Houses, you don't have the whole, like, uh, I'm going to say, morally questionable part of having them have offspring. No, you just. So that you can use them to fight, basically. But yeah. you can try to get characters to still marry or be with each other. So, depending on who they're most friends with, they will get a specific ending with that person, and if they're not friends with anyone, they get their own like solo ending. Mm -hmm. So like, there's there's a, like a set like you know it's a if conditional statement in the code that's like if this person is friends with this person but not this person, they get this ending. If they're friends yeah. with this person but this person and all that kind of stuff, so you can like manipulate that. So you see people like there are walkthroughs on YouTube and like walk through from like the first battle how to get to the ending where this one character marries this character and not that character kind yeah. of thing. So, like, you can have to start that early, basically. Right. The yeah. good news is that unlike, like, Persona or something, um, the, the social aspects and the story aspects, which are really cool, don't affect gameplay. You're not going to, like, not marry two characters and then because of that you don't get, like, the S-tier ending for the game. Yeah. Typically, the game's ending does not rely at all on these. It's just about, like, character depth and abilities to use in battle and individual gotcha. endings yeah. but you 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 can you can get to the ending and talk, not talking to anyone basically yeah yeah that is definitely the ending i have thus far been working toward <laughs> <laughs> well you've only seen like one of the um like so like once you get into the somnial which is what they call the hub in this game you'll, yeah. you'll, there's a bunch of activities there that you'll want to engage in i would say engage in pun not intended boom um pun so, not nintendo that's good <laughs> um, so some common elements that will make the series special, right? So the main thing the Fire Emblem is known for is permadeath. Yep. So if you play in classic mode, because now they, they give you an option to not play in that mode, are you playing classic mode? No. You gotta play in classic. <laughs> you gotta play in classic mode. Classic mode is the most fun. Yeah. Too late. I already. You can didn't. switch. Oh, well, that's yeah. not happening. Yeah. Classic. <laughs> are you playing casual? Yeah. Okay. Well, casual at least like they die in battle. But they come back. They yeah, come back. I was looking for like. There's a Phoenix mode where they like just come back in the same the next turn. Oh, that's even worse. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't pick that. I didn't see that. Yeah. Uh, maybe I should look for that. No, you should um. play in classic. <laughs> yeah, in classic, if you um, lose them, easy they, classic. Because here's the thing: they give you more there is characters. No easy. It's just normal. Well, no, normal's easy. Normal's easy. Yeah. No, it's not. Well, yeah. It's but, but if come it on. If it was easy, they'd be easy. <laughs> come on. Look. 
All I'm saying is, I have a book deadline. I was looking for like the fastest well, way through this the, game. The classic will not affect the, the fastest way of your game at all. The classic just means that the get the other because if you die in any difficulty, you restart. Yeah, you you are not you, you are always in die. classic. Yeah, oh, but God. like your 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 units, your characters, they if in classic, if they perish in the battlefield, they are gone forever. Doesn't change anything about how you, how fast you can beat the game. Changes the story, and also they Changes give the story. you they give they're going to give you more units than you, you need than you can use in a battle. Yeah, they're going to give yeah, you a lot so more you, units. You can only use like you generally like eight, eight to eight or yeah. nine per battle, and they're going to give you like thirty characters. So like the assumption is some of these will die. Some of these will die, and it like it makes the story feel more real because when you lose a character and like you have to lose a character, then it feels like impactful and there will be scenes later on in the game where like two characters will be talking and you can tell like the third line would have been there yeah. and it's just not there from a story perspective. Or they'll say stuff like man I wish they were here kind of stuff. Yeah. So I actually use Fire Emblem as an example in my classes of how games can still have permanent consequences despite save points. Yeah. Because in Fire Emblem they they so it's like uh, there's like there's four elements to meaningful choices right so pixel depth there's um, awareness, um, reminders, gameplay consequences, and permanence. Fire Emblem does a really good job of, of having reminders and gameplay consequences specifically because the characters will be like, hey, um, I wish that character was here because he was our only axe wielder and we need one right now or something like that. Or, or and, and then when you're in the battle, you'll be like, man, I could easily kill this unit with that one unit, but he died three battles ago. So like, it's, it's really powerful in that way. So that's why we recommend it because you'll see a different store, different side story than us if you have different characters alive basically and it'll make it feel like you should keep like it's like a nuzlocke it's like a nuzlocke the, the original fire emblem was made to nuzlocke yes and like pokemon who should have a nuzlocke mode fire emblem hat originally was a nuzlocke and they created a non-nuzlocke mode version yeah, yeah. um so it, it's it's pretty it's it's pretty wild especially when you have like time skips because like you'll have like They'll, sometimes they'll, they'll, they'll ask you, like, man, remember when that one character died five years ago? And you're like, that was 20 minutes ago for me, man. <laughs> of course I remember. Ah, I messed up. Yeah, I messed up. I know. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty good. But now they give you, like, and you can always, like, return time now and there's stuff like they that. They are softer nowadays, yeah. yeah they, they generally have some sort of time rewind mechanic in-game in one battle. Yeah. So you can, like, skip back two or three turns to, like, m fix a minor mistake you made, whereas in Fire Emblem 1 or, like, the old games, it's just you, you're done. try your best. Yeah, it's done. yeah. Done. Save and restart. Um, so, like we said, they, they do have time skips, right? So these are sometimes five years, these are sometimes 25 years. So you get to see a whole new generation of characters come through. It's, it's like, a pretty unique way of doing games. Or they, that's why you end up with 30 units. Right. Because um, you have, like, 15 characters from the first half of the game, then another 15 in the second half of the game. Some of those related to each other, some of those hate each other. Yeah, it's pretty wild. The marriage and breeding mechanic, which we talked about here a little bit. Um, there are several guides out there on how to have the best units bred. Yeah, because yeah. they affect each other's scores. Yeah. It, it is like breeding in Pokemon where you have, like, you want to have the best IVs possible. Yeah. Yeah. It's real uh, eugenic stuff going it's, on it's here. It's wild, yeah. There's wild. some mild eugenics stuff. Um, and then you have things mild? like early the, er, in the early games. No, no, no. So Fire Emblem, you know, it's pretty common now for games to have like a rock paper scissors system, where yeah. like one thing beats another. So you're always you're never in advantage or disadvantage at the same time. Um, Fire Emblem kind of started this with their combat triangle. So lances lance units beat sword units, sword units beat axe units, and axe units beat lances. And then you have things like archers aren't good against all three of those, but they can like they're really good against uh, cavalry or mounted units. Um, and like magic is good against armored units, basically. So yep. there's, yeah, there's a lot the, of the Pegasus there. characters are good against the magic units. Yes. So there's a, there's a secondary triangle there. Yeah. I will say this game is a lot harsher with its triangle. The break the, mechanic. The break mechanic. Yeah. yeah. So in past games, uh, when you would attack with a character, it just made it a little stronger. Basically, did like super effective and non super effective. But if you're high enough level, it didn't matter. Just like in Pokemon, this one has a break mechanic. So if a character that is strong against your unit hits your unit or vice versa you get a free action and they can't respond the to anyone else goes one way to yeah. anyone else so like they'll get they'll get broken basically their stance gets broken yep. right and you can see that the animation they're like they're like all scared yeah, they yeah. lose their weapon they lose yeah. their weapon and if any other unit attacks that unit that turn they will just take damage they can't retaliate which is nice when it's working for you yeah 
because it means you can like move in with a strong unit against that unit, break them, and then use a bunch of your units that would normally be weak yeah. to attack back, and they can't, they can't fight back because yeah. you've broken them. Uh, but when it happens against you, it's a real it's yeah, you're real like, kick I, in the teeth. I almost died. Or I always had a character die in like one of the first battles. They got broken, and then like it got hit again. And I was like, they're like a two HP. Yeah. I was like, oh god. Yeah, it was a bad time. Um, but it's it's similar to like um, in Persona when you like when you're ambushing shadows, it's great because they're moving first. But when they ambush you and they move four times before you get to move, it's not good. Brutal. Yeah. Um, and then you have uh, the we talked about like in combat relationships, right? So uh, like you have characters who do actions together in the combat situation that they get bonuses to like their relationships with it, and then they can get more um, buffs depending on who they are right so you can also like look up like which characters combine to have give each other the best buffs kind of thing and try to like have them walking around the battlefield together yeah I've seen I like I read posts of people being like I wanted these two to get married so bad that like for my last two battles I didn't even use them as units in the battlefield. I just had them walk space by space together <laughs> the entire back. time, and I took all the turns so I could do it for max. Nice. <laughs> um, so, and then you have the story themes, which are like they're usually like large scale conflicts, you know, um, continental size, like like size wars of fantastical nature coming like together, and you have to pick a side or a nation. Or you're a part of a nation, and you have to like fight the other nations, kind of thing. Um, you're usually like you're usually like a member of royalty from a nation, or a random mercenary that got that gets sucked in, right? But there's usually a continental scale war, and you have to pick a side, basically. I will say that I tend to like the games better where you are not royalty. Yeah, I think they're interesting. Um, but the royalty games are fun too. The cool thing is, for those of you that are feeling a little daunted by all of this, each Fire Emblem, for the most part, with a few exceptions is its own unique story on its own unique continent and sometimes its own unique like world. Yeah. So you don't have to have played the past 22 Fire Emblems to yeah. pick up Engage. Just pick up Engage and start going because yeah. there are new stories every time. It's very similar to Persona. Yeah, I would actually recommend... It's even more detached to Persona, right? Because, yeah, I would actually recommend starting with Three Houses, but it, John is right. It's like there's, there is no connection that would make you feel like you're missing something left out yeah there, there is connections but you won't even know like you won't know and you won't know you're left out it doesn't matter right um because they're small like the the continent of of five, of three houses is implied to exist close to the continent of a different game but it literally does not matter or come up in any way shape or form it's yeah. just kind of like an easter egg yeah um which for engage is a little more important um which we'll talk about here in a second but um it's you know these games are supposed to be standalone fantasy adventures which some of them have sequels of each other and like some of them occur in the same continent years later but most of the most of the ones don't um and then you have you know there's dragons there's magic there's wyverns there's pegasus right pegasi there's almost always a dark lord almost always some sort of dark lord not always they're usually the villain but not always the only villain right yeah which is dragon a demon lord uh something yeah because dragons in the world of fire emblem exist as humans for most of their life. So they can be humans, but they're still dragons. In this game, in, in Engage, you start you are part of the royalty, like you're one of the divine dragons. In Three Houses, you're a mercenary. So they kind of like went mercenary, you're nobody who gets conscripted into an army and like becomes a leader because you're so good at stuff. In th in uh, Engage, you are the main person of that army already because you wake up from a thousand years slumber. Pegasi. Pegasi. Um... So with that, let's talk a little bit about the story of Fire Emblem Engage. So in Fire Emblem Engage, it is set in the land of Elios, again, an entirely new continent, right? Uh, it, or entirely new land. It has five con five, has five countries. Um, it's like two continents, maybe? Mm -hmm, mm hmm Yeah. Um, there was a war a thousand years ago, classic, uh, between the Divine Dragons, which is like the race that you and your mom are a part of, and the Fell Dragon, um, which resulted in his sealing and inspired the use of emblems, which are, in this game, rings with the power of heroes of alternate timelines. Okay. You can put a ring on, and it brings up a hero from a different Fire Emblem game. game. The main characters of these different Fire Emblem games are usually like the actual emblems, but then you can make smaller rings that are also other characters of those games. And it's like the ghost of the character? I think yeah. it's implied that it's not like... That actual character. It's a being version of the character. It's a version of their personality that exists. Yeah, it's not the character being transported in there. It's like 
this ring embodies that character's spirit. Yeah. Yeah, so we get to speak with them and converse with them. A persona, kind of. Almost, yeah. Like a, a stand in JoJo, basically. Yep. Um, but um, this is like, this is the, it's similar to how Pokemon has battle gimmicks. Fire Emblem also always has like a battle gimmick, right? In the previous game, it was the crests, which lets you use specific weapons and do more damage. In this game, is you can have rings that let you Sailor Moon style bond with the spirit of a character from a different game. And use their abilities. It's closer to it's closer to the Dragon Ball Z. Uh, yeah, fusion, fusion, because you actually take on the look of yeah. half, yeah, half yeah. that character, half your character. Yeah, you like have some special clothing going on. You can use their weapons, right? Yep. So it's kind of a fusion mechanic as well. Is that why she's heterochromatic? Uh, I think we're gonna find that out about that. I don't know yet. I uh, actually okay. don't know yet either. Yeah, because so John I'm hasn't not, finished the game. I'm not far enough into the game yet. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, I think there's uh, there's some stuff there for sure. Yeah. Um, so you fall asleep for a thousand years after, like you beat these people, like the fell dragon, and then when you wake up, your your castle gets attacked immediately. Boom! You wake up and you're like, wow, I wonder why you woke up now. And like people from the fell dragon attack you, and you're like maybe because you sense this somehow. Whatever the situation, there's some stuff going. on. I'm gonna spoil something for Brendan real quick. Um, you find out that your mom has been like channeling her life force into you for a thousand years to keep you alive, to keep you alive, and, ho- and hoping that you wake up. And then when you do. She only has like a week of life left, basically, and then she dies. Oh, I'll also say that relationships between immortals are always awkward yeah. because you're a thousand years old, your mom's like two thousand years old, you look the same age, yeah. and she is awkwardly attractive, and there's some weirdness that happens <laughs> there. I don't know. I, I don't <laughs> it's know. bizarre. I, it's I, a real it's a real feeling of like deep love, but because they're the same age it really throws me off. I, I didn't feel that. I think I, I don't know. Maybe because I'm using the I'm using the female main character. I oh. am. I am too. So maybe, but maybe that's me being like not open minded enough. I'm not sure. That's fair. Well, maybe yeah. the female main character like changes. But I would say that with the male main character, it's weird vibes. I wish I played with the male main character only because the I'm playing in Japanese and the Japanese voice actor for the male main character is one of my favorite Japanese voice actors. He's he's the Zenitsu voice actor in Demon Slayer, and I, I I like him a lot. Interesting. Yeah, and I wish I I wish I knew that before I started. Um, oh, sorry, buddy. No, you're in That's it. okay. Maybe this is. Maybe I didn't notice because I skipped all the dialogue. <laughs> yeah. Stop doing that, Fair. you monster. Um, <laughs> hey, so, I'm a divine dragon, all right? You will show me some respect. I am also a divine dragon. <laughs> um, exactly. So show me some respect. The rings that, like, the emblem rings were separated after that war a thousand years ago because they didn't want one country having too much power. When 12 rings are combined, you can do magic stuff. Yes. Yeah. Um,. So they're all like, you know, there's there's six of them where you are in the Somnial. Yep. And then they get taken, I think. Yeah, no. so you are you are essentially like the theocratic version of the UN. There are like yes. four countries, they all exist, and they exist in relative harmony, but the person that's supposed to serve as the arbitrator is you who is a living god. And your job is to like... It, used, it was your mom. It was your mom. Yeah. And your job is to like arbitrate between these four countries and serve as like a theocratic version of the UN. So you don't actually have like armies or power, but you have like utter respect. And you yourself are very powerful. And you like personally yeah. are very powerful. Yeah. yeah. So you have to go collect these 12 rings, which is kind of how you get set on your quest, right? So you have to go to each continent, each country, excuse me. Get two rings. To get rings from there so you can collect all 12 to then... Battle, battle the fell the fell dragon with your full strength, basically. Um, the rings give you skills, um, but more importantly, they let you Sailor Moon style summon a hero. Yep. And it's 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 beautiful, and it happens every time you summon a hero. You can actually toggle that off. And I was like, how dare you even ask me that? <laughs> um, for this is the thing I wanted to get to here real quick. So for 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 Fire Emblem super fans, this must like for people that played every game since like the nineties and played localizations and they were like learning Japanese to play Fire Emblem. This like, is the game for them. This must be the most amazing thing. Yeah. Like imagine I, the thing I can close more closely rem, like imagine is like imagine if I was in I was playing Persona Six and in that game you have a mechanic where you can summon the characters of other personas to fight with you. I'd like cry. Be cool. I'd be like weirdly giddy about it. And this is the same thing. Imagine if you play a series that's twenty five years old. And in the new game, you get to summon the old heroes you played as and with to help you fight in the new game. And that is fanfic. That's fanfic. It's fanfic. Yeah. What game would be that for you? Can you think of one? The 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 thing that immediately sprung to mind was actually like the D and D campaigns I've done with John, and we that could be cool. In cool the planning. last in the yeah. last campaign he and I played, which obviously the our viewer will have very little context of, we actually kind of did that because 
with the same group, mostly the same group, three of the same players. We added a fourth for the second game. We played a campaign. Didn't go super well in the very final boss. So then we did a different campaign, and at the end, we went back and fought that exact same final boss, but with our new set of characters. But we brought back the oh, old nice. characters, yeah. right? So my old druid came in and was, like, helping out my fighters. So that was, like, the closest thing I could think of to that. Fun. And it was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think I would equate it to, like, end game. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Oh, Where, yeah, like, yeah, we yeah. see all the characters yeah. come back and they're all working together and fighting together. It is, it is a lot of fun as a mechanic. I will say that I think the story, and we'll see how I feel at the end of the game, but it feels like the story didn't put in the effort to warrant that level no. of, like, mega I think, mega I, I, I think game. all Fire Emblem, like, baseline stories are very, like, basic. It's the, it's the depth of the characters that add the depth to right. it, right? Because, like, the story is, like, either you're the, you're the strongest person on the continent, you got to fight the dragon. That's Ooh, it. That's, that's it. the story, right? Um, but there's like the depth of the characters will bring the story to it. But I would agree, like it fe- it, ver- it it very much feels like okay, we got everyone into the series with three houses. Now we're gonna do engage where we bring back characters from previous games, so people that play three houses play engage, and then they go like, wow, I wonder what the game with Sigurd is like, and then they go play that. Right. Um, that's what feels like they did, but I mean, it's still like it's it's a, like a fanfic moment, right? I mean. It, that's a cynical way of looking, and I'm sure that's part of the thinking, but also I'm sure that the people who make these games are also like, man, how awesome would it be to be able to call one of these characters? Right? Well, one of my biggest problems with the games is that it feels less like Endgame, which felt like a culmination of 25, of like 10 years of yeah. brilliance, and more like a fanfic. And part of it is because maybe you haven't played all 20 games. Because you watched all 25 games. part of it is the movies. writing of Engage. I agree, the, is writing, the writing is hilarious. Not as good as <laughs> the writing some of the is so in your face. Games. Um, yeah, that, that was one of the reasons I started skipping the dialogue, actually, because I was like, this is real f- corny. <laughs> it's super corny, always. Yeah. Um, but so, it's wasn't. worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like, and, and beyond that, right, so when you call an emblem, it's not only helping you in battle, but it exists as a spirit in your hub now. Yes. So then you get to see, like, Marth, the, you can form pro- relationships the protagonist, with them. from the first, yeah, from the first um, like Fire Emblem ever interacting with Byleth, the main character of the last one, like as if they were actually human in the same space and interacting, and not like if they're fake and like oh I don't know who you are. They know all, they know each other because they know they're special kind of thing, and like they meet and it's a whole it's it's like it's not it's not only like fanfic in the sense of like we're bringing back characters to help us fight, we're bringing back characters. And then they talk to each other, and they can romance each other as spirits. Yeah, it's like getting all your favorite action figures out of your toy box yep. and then playing with them together. And somehow, <laughs> like justifying it and being like, "Yeah, they can call each other with emblems, uh, yeah. rings, rings." I yeah. mean, and that's what it feels like. It yeah. feels like we've taken, the, we've gone to the toy box, we've gotten these dump figures, it out, dump it out. We're like gonna and play like, with all a, them we together. Have a Tonka truck, like a, a Power Rangers thing, a Voltron, and a Gundam. And like a Barbie, and we're like, you guys are in the same universe. How would Barbie admit to the yeah, other? Exactly. Which is great, but it feels the writing is about as deep as that as well. Yeah, I think I, I agree with that. Um, but I, I, I think maybe we'd have a different opinion, not about the writing, but about how organically maybe it meshes if we like had played all twenty of them. Because like I, I, I have no connection to Marth, right? So it doesn't like necessarily matter to me. But I'm excited. I, I consider buying the DLC <laughs> pack that came with Edelgard as, and Edelgard, Dimitri, and Claude as one of the rings. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, I, I, that would be cool. more rings. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, and then you find out in the game too that you can you can like make rings that bring out the minor characters in those games, and they can be part of your bond as well. Yes. Which is like, again, they're bringing back like characters that people probably don't remember. Like, oh my god, I remember this guy, kind of thing. Or for us, it's just like cool plus one magic. Extra, yeah. extra archer attack. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so it, I, I think it's like one of the coolest mechanics I've seen in the game because they basically took like, what if we took someone's craziest fanfic and put it in the game and made a Sailor Moon style? Yep. But it, it doesn't. It, it doesn't have a deep enough justification. It's basically like, let's just do it because it's fun. Yeah, it would have been really cool yeah. if this was like the third game in a series of like amazing games. Yeah. Yeah. If it was like if in ga- the first engage you find one ring kind of thing, you're like, oh my yeah. god, I got it. yeah. I think like, it could have built more, but again, I think they're doing the thing which is they played three houses. We have more people playing this than ever. Yeah. Releasing actually engage was there was rumors about engage was ready to go in like 2021. That's why. Like there's screenshots of engage and people are like, 
it, there's a Fire Emblem sitting in the shelves of Nintendo right now, and they release it in 2023. Yeah. It feels, they're just trying to DC Universe it a little too hard, I think. Yeah, they're, they're taking, like, people like, are... Quick, let's have an Avengers, yeah, go, get pe- it rolling. People are playing Fire Emblem, let's get a Fire Emblem that gets them to think about the old Fire Emblems, and then go back and play them, and then let's release a bunch, of them, a bunch of the Nintendo Switch Online, which is what they're doing also. Which is cool. I wish they had remakes, though, like the like Fire Emblem, or Final Fantasy like, remasters and stuff like that. Oh, I wish yeah. they had remasters. Because there's no way of going black and, play, and paying, playing Shadow Dragon and Blade of Light. That, but you'd like to so like hard. know the story with a new... Exactly. With give actual me, modern gameplay. Give me modern gameplay with the old stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, Alright, so that was our discussion of the of Engage, right? And how it's going to work. Um, or how, how it works. Uh, now I want to do... A, I, I want to play a little game that I call Fire Emblem Name. Real or made up? <laughs> so I'm basically going to give you some names of old Fire Emblem, well, Fire Emblem games, and you're going to tell me if... I'm not going to give you the year, but I can give you the decade if you want. Okay, okay. It's a hint. It's okay. my hint, okay? Yeah. okay? And you can tell you tell me if it's a real name or a made-up name. Okay. By the way, these are all... I, I pulled names, so the ones that are real are real names. Yes. The ones that are made up are variations. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, uh, okay so you're familiar with Shadow Dragon and Blade of Light. Yes. Okay? Yeah. All right, here we go. Uh, let's see. Um, Fire Emblem, the Binding Blade. Real. Real? Why do you think that? Uh, they're all real. <laughs> <laughs> real. Nice, nice try. Uh, um, yeah, I'm going to say fake on that one. That I've never heard real. of that one. That oh, gosh. <laughs> Dang it. The Binding Blade is real. All right. Now on to the sequel. Fire Emblem, the Blazing Blade. Real. That one's fake. That one's real. Gosh, dang it. How many Blade games played, are there? No, it's not the first one I played. Well, that one's the first one that came to the U.S. Interesting. 2003. So, so I did not play the first one. Yeah. Um, the threequel. Fire Emblem the Shadow Blade. Real. It's real now. That one's fake. <laughs> <laughs> that one's called Shadow Dragon. It's I not have a heard se- of Shadow. It's, it's not yeah, a yeah. sequel. Okay. It's just, it's later. I, I added that in there. So Interesting. Binding Blade and Blazing Blade are real. 02 and 03, Blazing Blade is the first one that came to the U.S. Okay. Uh, Shadow Dragon is from 08. So I did join in the middle of the series then. Yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah. Um, All right, here we go. Uh, Fire Emblem Gaiden. Real. No, that's... That's... That's a ninja game. (laughs) No, that's a real... That's real. (laughs) That's from 92. That is the second ever Fire Emblem game. What does Gaiden mean? I have no idea. We should look that up. Uh, I'll look that up right now. Gaiden. Uh. Okay. I'll find that out later and put it okay. in there. Okay. I think it, it it means also something else. It means like a game that is that refers to another work. So maybe it just means like sequel. I think it's a word for sequel. So maybe. Ninja Gaiden is just Ninja Two. I I yeah I don't know. I have to look that up. Okay. But it says that right. Gaiden is a word for like a work that refers to the other work but isn't associated with it specifically. Kind of okay. Thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. This is here we go. 96, Genealogy of the Holy War. No. Real. That's real. Wow, they call out their eugenics in the title of the game? <laughs> that's the one that Sigurd's from. That's why he's the Ring of the Holy War. Oh, my All goodness. All their rings' names like relate to what they did. Oh, I man. I think the, the Marth ring is like Ring of the First or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> Thracia, 1776. Real. Thracia is an actual Fire Emblem location. It is, but it's Thracia 776. It is not the year of independence. Uh, yeah. It's not 1776. Okay, okay. It's just 776. Wow. That is a real name. All right. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> Fire Emblem, Hope of the Emblem. Real. That one's real. Uh, it's not. What? Uh, it's called Mystery of the Emblem. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That was from 94. Fire Emblem, new mystery of the emblem. Real. No. That one's real. God. <laughs> I don't think Jonah's got a single one right. <laughs> Statistically, this is very unlikely, guys. I have a 50 50 chance. My strategy is way better. I think I, think I, I just saying real at the time. I think I, I, think I like I did these well, though. Oh um, all right. Fire Emblem, The Secret of the Stones. Real. No, it's Sacred Stones. That's the first one I played. That's the first one I played. I was trying to give John a win. That was where I came in. This All right. Uh, a Fire Emblem, Arcanian War Chronicles. Real. No. Real. Real? Real. Arcanian? Yeah, I think it's another continent. Wild. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I only have I only have one left. 
Uh, Fire Emblem New Dawn. Real. That one's real. I know, I made that up entirely. That doesn't oh, exist. There's no God. <laughs> That one I made it, I made up and I made up a year for that one. Wild. <laughs> Wild. So as you can see, the Fire Emblem names are all so specific yet generic. Right. <laughs> like that it's enough for us to like I did this in like five, ten the minutes. The more incredible part is that I've only played one of all of those games that yeah. you talk about. Because I that, played, well, oh I, I didn't gosh. put Awakening here because I know you played. I didn't put Fates because it's famous. Um, I didn't put Path of Radiance. Is the I didn't put I Path of Radiance because it's famous. Yeah. So I, I chose some non-famous ones. Right. Um, on, on purpose. Well, I did put a couple. Like I did put um, genealogy of the Holy War is widely considered. I'm going to, to play genealogy one. of the Holy War. It's considered War. to be like one of the best ones. Wow. Yeah. All right. Ninety six. Ninety six. Yeah. So the same year that Pokemon came out. No, that's yes. ninety eight. Ninety eight. No. Is it? I thought it was ninety six in Japan. Oh. Ninety six in Japan. Okay. Um. And then I had one more, but I already referenced it in the show, which is uh, Fire Emblem Three Hopes. Three so Hopes. Supposed to Catch my Not like a real Fire Emblem game. It's one of the spin-offs. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, what's interesting about this is that the name naming conventions of um, anime has has uh, like moved in this direction too, where they're very specific about things. Yeah. And I was reading an article about that, and it, it's because they saw um, anime sales or manga, manga sales decline because people were bu- weren't buying them because they'd have to read three of them to understand what the story was. Mm-hmm. So they started putting the story. Pl- like main plot points in the title, so that's why you're like. I was turned into a slime. I was turned into a slime in another world, and the most powerful being here, and then there's a war happening. That's why the titles are all like very, very specific. Interesting. Because people don't have time to like pick up three before they find out what's happening. It's like old school novel titles. Yeah. Like the earliest novel titles would be like the story of Tristan and Shandy, or how a young boy <laughs> like it would have like that's interesting. The title would be like a full sentence. Yeah, that's that's what they do now because there's so many mon- the, mon- the macro market is so saturated. They're like, I need to. You need to know if you're gonna like this by the first page, or else you won't pick it up. Basically. Right. What's interesting yeah. is that American music is going in the opposite direction, and there have been studies that show that if you have a one-word name for a song, it does better on the charts. Interesting. Yeah. Or, yeah. or like your think of like your like your album titles. You have a lot of like one-word album titles, yeah. like Red or. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't want to think about what that says about us. And interesting. Yeah. yeah. Japan's going the other direction. We're like make one letter. Numbers. <laughs> it's like, you don't waste my time. Yeah. Too complicated. Well, this is a way of not wasting time too, right? It's just yeah. them being like, this story is going to be about these four things, eventually, kind of thing, mm-hmm. right? So, you, but you don't have to read it all to find out, kind of thing. Um, so, um, we're going to talk a little bit about our expectations with the game, right? We're coming to the end of the episode here. So, I, I myself, I expect to enjoy this a lot, yet be frustrated some of the time. Because a this isn't three houses, <laughs> and I miss three houses. I miss the characters, and I miss the mu- the music in three houses. is So good. Got to move on. <sighs> that's why I find that's why I find most churn games out, right? <laughs> um, and I, I I don't have a connection to most of these emblem characters, so like I I feel like if you played the, if you played a lot of the other fire emblems, and you're like, oh, I want to connect the emblem of Celine or whatever with this character because I think they're similar, or I think that she would in real life quote unquote like support her my game is going to be like I want this stat so put on this character I think you're going to end up doing it anyway because as much as the cool character interactions matter the stats matter so much more no no I agree with you but I think like when I'm playing Persona I'll think like I want to have this one Persona character even if I don't use it because it relates to how my character is right I would do that to some extent in the the final battle I'd be like no 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 no. you are I need the avo here I need the avoidance here um, but I wish I had that connection. So I wish I want to play. I want to play older Fire Emblem games, but I don't want to like emulate them or some other legal way of playing them um, because they're all so hard and so obtuse. Like the gameplay, it takes so long to do anything. Like the menus are horrible because early '90s gaming uh, yeah. uh, design and UX and was so far behind. So I wish they gave like Fire Emblem the Final Fantasy treatment, which is remakes for basically almost every single one and like some of them are combined remakes and stuff yep. like that um, so I wish they did that instead of just making more Fire Emblems because they do more more I, cowbell I'd even settle for like a Super Mario All-Stars version where we just packaged six yeah, of them yeah. all together in one yeah, yeah. and then they, well they have them. a couple of those yeah um, cowbell more cowbell ding, ding, ding. John what are your expectations about this or yeah, this. so I uh, I did at least start this much earlier because I bought it when I first came out because I really liked Fire Emblem, 
And then something happened. I think it was Scarlet. I think mm. Pokemon Scarlet came out, and yeah, I it dropped out, it. Yeah. yeah, so I made it to, like, chapter 12 the first time. And I'm like 20, re- 21 chapters or something? I have no idea how many yeah. there are. But I made it to, like, chapter 12 the first time, and then I stopped. Um, I do remember it being not quite as engaging as Three Houses, um, but I remember the, uh, liking the combat mechanics more. And so if everybody does what I think they'll do, I think you will like this game. You'll like it, but you'll like it less than Three Houses. Yeah. And I think Brandon will really like it. I think Brandon's going to really like it. He's just I think if he gets into it, it, this is a game for Brandon. Yeah, it is a game for Brandon. Maybe we'll find out. Uh, what are your expectations then? Uh, to run head first into the difficulty curve and like knock myself out. Well, you do have like the as we were saying, there used to be called divine pulse in three houses, and you have a, a time rewind mechanic. Yeah. So it is un. It will get harder, but it's unlikely that you'll hit into a, you'll hit a wall, but you'll be able to like backtrack and like try to find ways around it. I think it's unlikely you'll lose a battle, for example. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think you will progress through the story. Just fine, especially if you're playing on normal. Yeah, I am on normal. Yeah, so and you have well, almost not unlimited, but a lot of like a lot of chances of going back in time to fixing mistakes you may have made. Yeah, and, sure. it, and there's a limit how many turns you can go back, but it's it's pretty generous. Yeah, and they've gotten yeah much more generous. So if you go back to like Sacred Stones, which is the first one I played, they didn't tell you anything about the character stats you were attacking. They didn't tell you what was going to happen, and if you died, there was permadeath, and there was no going back. And I think they've tried to make the game more casual friendly in a lot yeah. of ways. But it's cool that they did that with being like, we're going to make this game easier to play, but it's a it's a it's a setting, right? It's not like we yeah. we didn't take away the permadeath, right? Right. And even even with the rewind, it's an option. You it's can an option. always just yeah. like you can always just you want to nuzlock this, nobody's stopping yeah. you. I I am I am not I'm trying to not unless like I'm I'm doing those rules that are like unless something happened that was completely out of my control. Yeah. I'm not going to rewind. If I lose a character because I put him in the bad position on the battlefield... You're going to try to that's own it. it through? Yeah. Yeah. Or, like, sometimes, like, story things happen that, like, you should have been able to see, but if you're not, are you going to rewind for those? You're going to let the story happen the way it would happen? I mean, I... Like, if one of the castle walls breaks down and an army marches through and you had a person right there, but you didn't know that army was coming well, through? Well, that's part of the thing that I'm like, that's not that's not on me. Okay, like, okay. Can't, I can't... Unless there was a clue that was like, those walls might break, and then, and then that. But, but I also feel like sometimes, like... Those moments make the story more real because yeah, those true. are the moments yeah, that, true. like, if this was Game of Thrones, that's when yeah. you would know. Luckily, it's not though. Yeah, <laughs> I, I will say that I tend to use the rewind mechanic most around unfair criticals. Oh yeah, uh, yeah because yeah, occasionally yeah. you'll engage with a person, you'll be perfectly matched. It'll say you'll win. They'll land a critical, kill your character instantly, and you're which like, is, the math didn't say it would work that well, way. Well, which is the right. same. It's the same thing as like in Pokemon, where you're nuzlocking, right? Where you're like, mm-hmm. you lose a Pokemon to a critical, and you're like. Because it's so much bigger for you to lose that character than it is for the computer, right? Yeah. Like I think I will I will rewind for an for a critical unless it's a critical for a like a, a like an actual uh, like NPC character like character NPC not yeah. like just a random boss. Fight. So if it's like a boss fight or like a, a general in the other army that crits me, then I'm like, all right, this this guy also matters for them kind of thing. Well, and I will give you a or little bit person. of advice with newer fire elements. So with three hours and engage. They kind of counter that in that I don't know exactly how the RNG generator works, but the RNG generator is tied to character movement, placement, and attack. So if you have a turn, go up, engage with a force, they critical, they kill you, and then you're like, all right, rewind, and then you go and try that again, they're going to critical, they'll critical again. again. Yeah, they'll critical it does, again. So it does a random no. seed. It, do, it does random seed, but the random seed is... It's not. It's not. Uh, I haven't looked reset. In. It's not reset once you go back in time. Yeah. Right. So, so the I, same thing will happen every time. So like in order to actually change things, you have to, to like not do that. Engage with a different character yeah. or gotcha. move and take an extra turn before you. Yeah. I haven't looked into the back into the game to yeah, know like when it reseeds, yeah. but it doesn't reseed instantly. Yeah. It does. Gotcha. It does not. And I remember like thinking like, what are the odds? It's happening three times. I'm like, I, I think it just keeps. <laughs> it just keeps doing it. Um, I actually had a, a situation where, like, I was trying... Actually, I'm using the divine r- the rewind mechanic to get better stats for my main character. Oh, yeah. So, like, I will try to calculate a way that my main character is always the one killing. Yeah. Right? Because um, you get stats for attacking, but you get more for defeating. Right. So, I, I tried, to, like, the general in the army of the of people attacking the castle, I was like, I'm going to do everything so that then I can move my main character to kill this general. Yep. But then, like, one of my people, like, my mage critted... And there was nothing I could do about it because I, I could like rewind like four turns and like try to do that again. I was like, 
that's gonna take too long. Always like, crits. As soon as I did, I was like, I can always crit. Yep. Like I can't kill this character anymore. I will say I do occasionally like manipulate the battlefield to make story beats happen. So to make oh, yeah. sure that like like if somebody kills somebody's father and then we're on the battlefield against that person, I'll put that character up against them because you'll yeah. get special little dialogue yeah. lines. Oh, nice. like, yeah. I won't let you do this. You killed my father. Yeah, but, like I because I had my mage attack the bad person first, you get a weird dialogue. It's like I'm coming in here no matter what, and it's like, I am a sacred guardian of this, but it felt like... It's disjointed. It disjointed, I was like, okay. <laughs> Whereas if it was my character, I never got to see that because they critted. Yeah. So I was like, right. okay, well, I guess I don't get to see it. It's fine. It's fine. And that's the it's thing fine. with Fire That's the thing with the Fire Emblem, like, specials and voice lines and endings. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Like, it doesn't... It's not going to affect your actual gameplay or your play But it's more fun. If but you it's like, more fun if, if you, you try to like... Right situations. Yeah. yeah. Like having a son kill a father, and that's always fun. Yeah, it's great. So fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> that might come up. <laughs> it, it will come up. It is Game of Thrones with beautiful anime people. <laughs> um, so that was our primer for Fire Emblem Engage. Uh, so over the next uh, two episodes, right? So six weeks or so, we'll be playing this game. Uh, so for the next game, uh, John, you've you've played up to a certain point. Where yeah, do you think we should get to? I think I think we should try to get to where I basically left off. Which is, not to give too much away from the plot, but you are going to suffer... Where's like, the time skip? There's no time skip. No time skip. No time skip okay. in this one. But this is where the time skip would be. Okay. So you are going to suffer a grave defeat by the Fennel Dragon. Not okay. to, like, not to like sure, give too sure. much away. And he's going to like take away half of your emblem rings, and you're going to okay. have to go find other new ones. I think it's like chapter 12. Okay. That's where you should, that's where you should try to get to. Okay. Yeah. All right, chapter tw- through chapter twelve. Through chapter, yeah. Wait until you're in the desert country. Okay. That then as soon as you get. So there, we have to play through chapter twelve, beat a desert country, uh, which probably take twenty hours or so. I yeah, guess. I'd say so. Yeah, um, it's a decent chunk through the game. So um, in, in that episode, we'll talk about our first impressions of the game and talk a little bit more in depth about how mechanics work and how much Brandon is enjoying it. I'm sure. <laughs> um, and but until then, um, I am Professor Phil Chaveau. He's Professor Brennan West, and he's Professor John Adams, and together we are professors who play video games, um, and we will see you in a couple of weeks. See you in three weeks.